so so I, I come now to you by stambesia i hope the color note that you are chewing will will, will give you more wisdom to <laughs> to foster this conversation <laughs> Now, your colleague has just said something. This is very instrumental. He says that by this statement of Tibonacci, Tibonacci is actually saying that we are Juan Cameron. And he's saying that. And that's why he makes the proposal of a referendum. Do you agree with Barista Fru that the statement of Tibonacci is in recognition of Cameroon's claim that we are an integral part of their country, but that we still have a right to self-determination. And then he ignores President Sisiko's declaration of our independence on the 30th of September um, uh, 2018. Do, do you think that is the case here? No, 20, 2017, please. Uh, I think Master the problem is the, the problem we face in most of these things is that we bring in all these pieces of things. If we were in a court of law, I have not said that 1608 is irrelevant. No. It is a relevant document. But how do you use it? Correct. It's important. It is not mm -hmm. right for us to sit there and just say, oh, Tibo, now she's saying that we're part of this camera. Remember, 1608, what the statistics those who voted for and against it in 1961. Most of those countries that were in the United Nations and voted for or against, are still there today. They have embassies in Yaoundé. Nebo Nash was in the embassy in Yaoundé, representing the United States of America. Did the US, for example, have been in the consulate in Bermuda Oboya? What did they consider what they call Northwest and Southwest to be with the embassy in Yaoundé, Russia, any other country? They consider us whether you like it or not, as part of what they call that people do come on. Our declaration that you have said that President uh, Sisiku declared was in 2017, 40, 50, 40 years after. The problem has arisen. And if you go back again and hear what Tebonash has said earlier, focus on this war, because they will come and ask you what are the root causes of this war. And you go back to root causes and bring out Resolution 1608, as Ambassador says, it, no, not so you said there was no decolonization of Southern Cameroon. My, uh, like uh, Mr. Fongalam for put it, a botched decolonization. Again, yeah. we're forgotten, we're forgotten 16, uh, 15, 14. 1608 came 21st of April. 1352, that put play beside was 1959 and the reason for doing it for the plebiscite for the referendum you know, for the plebiscite was that british said that these people were not viable enough to be independent but between these two resolutions in 1916 in 1960 of december 1514 was passed another united Nations resolution we said every country should be given independence notwithstanding its size its economy or its education this was before, <laughs> before uh, April 1961. This was United Nations resolution. So with that new resolution after 1952, which claimed that we were not viable, it defeats the purpose of a referendum, of a, sorry, of a plebiscite, which whole reason was simply that Britain said that we were not economically viable. But the very United Nations has said in 1514, 13 December 1960, let every country have its independence notwithstanding their size, notwithstanding their economy, not withstanding their, <laughs> their education, educational level. That, that, is, that is why the plebiscite was illegal. So, huh, so if, if the plebiscite was illegal, you and me, Mr. Anso, were for the court, were presenting 608. You said that was what? Yes. What, what shall we argue? I'm not, it's a rhetorical question. And so, again, 608, no. as it is, I said, as, I said earlier that- No, the one of you uh, agree yourself. The two of you, yes, the, you've not, you have not answered the, something in the question, which is what I'm going to bring into that. The both of you are agreeing I'm, I'm, with each other. But there's something I'm, in my I'm question you have not answered, which I'm going to bring it up. Go ahead. I've said, yes. that, I've said that Yaoundé refused to vote. To He voted everything in 1608. And so Article 5, that you want us to discuss, becomes, because what did Article 5 said? 
He said, you push you and sit down and agree on the terms of the union. I'm summarizing it. They had rejected the union. I think if our people, the punchers, and the rest who were there, if they had this idea in their mind, they wouldn't even have gone to Fumba. Yes. How are we going to pay, we're not going to pay a black price for Fumba who said, I don't want to marry you. Yeah, they have rejected the thing. And then what were they going to Fumban for? Britain was justified for not being in Fumban to me. Because yeah, when they had said, no, we don't want this thing. So why would they go discuss the terms of the union that they have rejected? So again, we have so a lot of evidence. What you use at what time is what is important. And so we can we can and we should argue our case using 1608 as evidence. Not as our Trump card. Sixteen. Okay. Yes. We show that. Uh, no, but that, that, uh, that is very good. That is. Can that I add something? Can I add something? No, can I add something? Yes, I'm going to. Yeah, give you the yeah, no, no, right now, right now, before I forget, before before I forget, before I forget, one sentence, one sentence only. The British, the British, the British voted. For resolution 1608 so it's binding on the british and yet it's binding on it's, it's binding on the british and therefore if the british if the british were with us if the british were with us this is where they can go to court and said yes la republic you you have it you 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 don't have to rely on resolution 1608 Therefore, you should not rely on this British Southern Cameroon being part of your country. But because again, since they are not with us, think they are in complicity. The both of you are just making the statement I was hoping that we we're going to make. But Stambesi has just said that we're going to use 1608 as evidence, not as Trump card. 100 yes. percent what I was expecting him to have said. You have just said something. I don't know whether I don't know whether you can use law. I don't know whether you can use law as evidence. I've never heard of it. But a resolution. It's not. It's not. A it's a law. No, it's, 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 it's an agreement. It's an agreement. But but it's not true. That agreement yes. can be used as evidence. The agreement, which is a collective agreement, yes, and, and can the be agreement can be tendered as the agreement can be tendered as evidence. But the question that yes. international law, international law, would the a court, an international court, accept a, a UN resolution as as evidence, as an agreement? There's something, there's something by and who? Says, there's something by Stambesia says that I agree with. By Stambesia says it. That we use it as evidence, and you have said something that supports it. For instance, you just say if they don't agree with it, then how do they depend on us? What legal process do they use to have a sovereign country, Saudi Cameroon, <laughs> as a part of their country? Because yes, we we became two separate countries more than two almost two decades before this resolution was voted am i correct but no 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 let me explain that let me explain that let me explain that the british voted resolution 1608 and it's binding on the british as i say if the british were still in were interested in us they can now go to the international before international court and said okay la republic of cameroon you did not vote and you are by law not obligated to respect resolution 1608 therefore you should not no, even no, respect no. The, the 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 no let me finish now let me finish let me finish okay. you right, la, la republic did not vote so it's not binding on la republic and that's why they have not taken any step to 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 respect resolution 1608 they have not taken any step to respect but, yeah. 1608. Therefore, okay. therefore, but, the yeah. British will tell them. The British will tell them you have no right to lay claim on the Southern Cameroons or the Northern Cameroons. 
because yeah, we, we are... the, because you the the resolution is not is not binding on you. How no, is that for international law? By some basis, I want you to set you on the conclusion that you wanted to give, so we can move on. I was trying to say this, but I saw it's wrong. You cannot when you pass a resolution, even in a local meeting that you and me have, family meeting, if resolution is brought to the table and there are ten of you there, for example, six people pass, it binds everybody, including the four who did not vote for it. It binds Aha. But, Aha. But let me say, the problem with 1608 is this i've said this a thousand times before the resolution because it depends about what i are trying to do with it. what are you passing the resolution for the resolution was meant to make two people come together one of the people parties says i don't want to be in that matter have you seen the local marriage all the time this was a couple trying to get married. The woman or the man say, I don't want this marriage. Even if all the whole family has said that you must marry this man, the marriage will not work. So whether they voted it or not, that reported uh, that people voted no to that marriage. But you ask, how did they get to us? How did they claim us? Their rationale has always been that we were reuniting with them. That is the basis of their case in 1960. Under what basis? Under what basis? What? Under what basis? Well, I think that, by the way, I agree with the board of you. I think we're going around, we're going around circles here. Cameroon has been bringing a fake argument, which we had. You, myself, and Barista Fru came on this platform. To, to educate Amazonians for close to three weeks when Kamto was actually bringing the same claims. So you, you that it is in cognizance of the power of this resolution. And that's why they are bringing that claim. Now, just so we conclude, and I'll give the both of you to talk on this. Your arguments are strong. The interpretation is impeccable. Amazonians have a clarity on the legal implication of not just the processes, but the articles the resolutions and, and UN charters involved in our case. I'm asking us, now that it is clear that the British were careless in the decolonization process, is it a rightful diplomatic move for the people of Amazonia to put themselves together and take the United Kingdom to court as one way to exert international pressure I will begin with you, Barrister Mbisi, and then we'll conclude, Barrister Fru. We are perfectly right to take them to court. I personally sitting here in 2012, 2013, before this war started, we contemplated an action to sue Great Britain. I still have the draft. I was in charge of making the drafts. That draft is still there. We can take action in any court. To, to highlight these issues. But what I saw is wrong. There was a plebiscite in East, there was a referendum in East Timor. You can cross check your records. So the, the central thing that we are discussing now should not be what, we are, what you're asking me to do. After, because we are debating what Tebunash said, from what he said, the recommendations that he made, fight, 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 fight go to the negotiation table and possibly get a referendum. This is his opinion. Or fight until Yaoundé leaves away. Which do we take as our, the best advice? He is giving an opinion, which is what we are trying to get out of. Uh